Hyundai is riding high in the sales charts at the moment with its i10 city car and i30 family car. But now it's the turn of this, the i20, a Ford Fiesta or VW Polo rival, to get an all new look. To find out how it will fare in the real world, we've brought five Watt Car readers here to Frankfurt to give their opinion. Having owned everything from Mercedes to Fords, Keith Gray was lured into buying a Hyundai Santa Fe in recent years. But what does he think of the i20? Peter McQueen is a current i20 owner and loves its all-round versatility on long and short trips. John Lenehan currently owns a Saab 93 and hopes the i20's design will catch his imagination as strongly as the five-year warranty appeals to his common sense. With three Hyundais in his garage, David Pugh is a super fan of the brand. But how will the firm's new direction fare in his eyes? Talk Warren is a self-confessed car nut and is looking for a new car to replace his current VW Golf Mark IV. I quite like the sharp lines and it gives a fiercer appearance, more so than the previous model. Um, it's quite a sporty appearance and um, it's a really good look to the car. I wouldn't mind having it on my drive. They've followed on from the i10, so it's a really smart looking little car. Personally, I don't like the sharp angle from the door to the C-pillar where the colour changes, but that's what makes it stand out. For a brand that's changed an awful lot over the years, I think that their exterior has come on an awful lot, so it's a lot better than perhaps the previous generations have been. It's, yeah, it's impressive. I like the C-pillar actually, so yeah, that's good. And I love the, um, the eyebrow lights, I think that they're impressive. Everything exudes a little bit of quality in there, and uh, I like the interior, I like the quality of the plastics, and quite a lot of them very nicely cushioned. Um, no, it just feels like a nice, solid car. I quite like the start-stop button as well. Um, it was a nice addition, and um, the sunglasses holder on the roof, quite like that. I was particularly impressed with the seats. I think they look very good quality, well bolstered, quite supportive, and. Um, really much better than I was expecting in this sort of classic car. It's good, but it's still got a tiny bit of a way to go. I think it's still got that kind of slightly plasticky hi-fi look. So, yeah, but it's a lot better than it used to be. I think the space in the back is adequate. It's certainly enough room for my two kids. Um, there seem to be pretty much adequate knee room for myself as well. Given that it's got the panoramic roof, I struggled a little bit in that my head was just touching the roof. But obviously if you pick the one without the panoramic roof, headroom would be good as well. Yeah, I think the space in the back is fantastic. I mean, the leg room's good. You know, you've got a, a nice uh, space saver in the back, which is good as having, instead of having a can of spray for a flat. And I think that, you know, if you've got children, I think that there's plenty of room. I think two full-size adults in the back is also an option. So yeah, it's, uh, it's good, it does the job, definitely. You can have a six footer in the front and you can get six foot people in the back. We've tried it today and it's really quite comfortable. The boot, you've got a false floor and a good usable space. I'd say it's got more space than my Ibiza that I've got at the moment. A small family could easily use it as an everyday car. Nice bit of storage in the back. Nice that the seats go completely flat. You know, that, that will aid, um, you know, getting bits and pieces out. Um, yeah, good space for that size of car, good space. Yeah, I do quite like the addition of the, um, the dock on the dashboard and the fact that it's detachable as well. Um, I think that's a really, really good thing to have. The only thing that would be an issue for me is um, I've got an HTC Android phone that apparently it won't work with at the moment. So I've got a choice of buying a new car and then probably buying a new phone as well if I want to buy that particular car. Really good. I like the idea of I'd go for the built-in sat-nav. You've got to have that nowadays. Everybody wants their iPhone to be charged and that. We don't want loads of wires trailing everywhere. I kind of guess that any new car launched without that now would be questionable. So it's unfortunately it's, it's great but expected. It's good to see it added on so that the compatibility is there for those who want it. I'm just happy to have a USB port and auxiliary line. Once this has been analysed and tested, then I'm sure it will be able to carve its own niche and probably they need to jump away from their original We Are The Pricing Point brand, you know, they are known for being a budget brand and obviously they're trying to be a bit more 
highbrow now, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes down the road. Comparing it to my i20, um, I really like my i20 for the safety, for um, the brand warranty, um, and just the looks as well, um, and the finish. Um, I do think this car um, exceeds the expectations of what I sort of expected today. It all comes down to the price. There's still that brand power that Ford, Seat, you know, the VW group in general still exert over a Hyundai. They've made great steps, but is it really there yet for that kind of price point? Possibly. It would certainly be a good second car for the family. The main car, I'd probably want a bigger car. But yeah, I would certainly consider it as a second car, as long as I didn't have to sit in the back too often. Probably not. <laughs> And they've still got, I'm sure, in a few years' time, I mean, look at where Skoda were and look at where they are now. So, you know, they've become so much more desirable. I think that if Hyundai continue with this new mantra, then they'll, they'll do well. I would buy one for the family. Um, for me, it's just, it would be more of a runabout, so I need a bigger vehicle, but I think my wife would love it. Nothing in that car suggests to me a cheap car. It looks nicely built, good quality. The i20 has been unveiled at the Paris Motor Show, but will go on sale in the UK early in 2015, with prices starting from around £10,500. To find out more in the meantime, click subscribe now or go to whatcar.com.